Honestly, if there was only one lens I could have for my Sony a7 IV, it would be the Sigma 24-70 2.8. And in this video, I'll explain why. Now today I want to talk to you about my favourite lens for the Sony system. This really is, I think, the one lens that you need when picking up a Sony camera. And once you've got it, it's going to cover 90% of the work that you do. Whether it's shooting corporate interviews, grabbing b-roll, doing headshots, whatever it may be, this lens really can cover the vast majority of the work that you get paid to do. So what makes this such a versatile lens and the one that you should be picking up straight away? Well, there's three reasons that I think this is the lens you should pick up before any other. First, let's talk about the focal range. 24 to 70 is ideal. At 24, that is more than wide enough to do real estate, to get wide shots of interiors if you need to do that. Going up to 70, that gives you nice compression so you can easily separate the subject from the background. Maybe that's for interviewing or doing a headshot or just grabbing a product shot. Now, you might not think that an f-stop of 2.8 is enough, but in reality, it really is. On a full frame sensor, that actually gives you quite a shallow depth of field, especially for video. And because these cameras are so good in low light nowadays, you don't necessarily need a super fast prime lens to be able to shoot in low light situations. Actually, I think for a lot of corporate work especially, having a bit of context of the location or the background is actually a really good thing. We can get a little bit too obsessed, I think, with having blown out backgrounds. And yes, they look great. They look nice and creamy. But actually, I think this lens can produce some really nice backgrounds as well. The out of focus areas at 50 millimeters or above look really nice. There is good subject separation there without going too crazy to the point where you can't tell where the person is. Finally, this lens is nice and sharp, and that is often seen as a bit of a negative nowadays in the filmmaking world. You always see on YouTube, you want this soft cinematic image, and yeah, that is really nice, it's very pretty. But actually, I think when you're doing work for clients, having a sharp lens, at least as your main lens, is really critical. You can always soften down an image. You can always use diffusion filters or applying something in post to soften the image down. Having a sharper image is often very useful when working with clients because they might want to zoom in on the image, for example. In which case, if the image is a bit too soft already, you may struggle to do that without really losing image quality. So what about the lens itself then? And let's start off with the build quality of this lens. As with all Sigmas, it is built like a tank. It is really solid, um, as you'd expect from any Sigma art lens. Now, this can be a bit of a negative when it comes to weight, because it's certainly a heavier lens than other options that are out there. But actually, I think it does give you a nice bit of confidence. When you're using this lens, it feels solid. It doesn't feel like it's gonna break in your hand. And actually, I think it also helps with uh, the stabilization and also balancing out the Sony cameras. If you're just using this lens on holiday, then maybe it is a bit too heavy and is a bit too much to carry around. But I think in a professional environment, you want something that feels solid, feels well-made, and you know is gonna get through the shoot day without a problem. Now, some people have had issues with dust getting inside of this lens. So as you zoom in and out, as you can see, it kind of extends and shortens. And for some people, they've had issues where dust has actually got on the inside and it just doesn't come out and it's just stuck there. Now, I've not really noticed that problem. I think I have seen dust appear inside before, but it seems to have blown away somehow. So maybe I've just been lucky with this particular lens or this particular copy of the lens. But I do know there are reports out there where they have had issues with the Sigma 24 to 70 and collecting dust on the inside. Carrying on around the lens, you've got a nice lock on the side there so it doesn't creep when you are carrying around the lens. Although I've not really noticed any issue with that happening, so I often don't really ever use the lock to be honest. You also have a nice assignable button right here so you can set it to uh, various focusing options, for example, or even any other function of the camera. Up here, you have your switch between manual and autofocus. This is really nice to have, so you can quickly switch between autofocus and just grabbing something in manual focus without needing to go into menus or pressing anything on your camera. Now, when it comes to the focus ring, it is by wire. It is not a mechanical connection like on lenses such as the Sigma 18 to 35. And that's a real shame because I really like manually focusing with other Sigma lenses like that one. It is a shame to lose that sense of movement when you're doing the focus pulling because it just makes it easier to do a reliable focus uh, time and time again. Whereas with fly-by-wire, you're never quite sure where you're going to land 
on your focus. That said, autofocus is so good now on these Sony cameras that you don't always really have to use manual focus, even if you're just doing shots of products or stuff. I do often like to switch back and forth between the two. However, if you can really learn, I think, the Sony autofocus system and the tracking, then this isn't really going to be a problem for you. Speaking of autofocus, the autofocus on this lens is brilliant. I've not noticed any issues whatsoever. It's super fast, it's super quiet, it locks on and tracks people's eyes without any problems on all the different Sony bodies that I have used this lens with. As I've mentioned earlier, the image out of this is very sharp. It's a really nice, good looking image as well. I think the background softens out nicely and the subject separation also looks really quite good. I have no problems at all with the image quality that this lens can produce corner to corner. Now this isn't a technical review on that though, but just from practical use day in day out, I've never had a concern when looking at photos or video that the image wasn't good enough to send to a client. There is a little bit of distortion if you turn off the feature in the camera to correct it, but personally I just make sure I leave it on on the cameras all the time and I have no issues with straight lines whatsoever. For me, I think this lens is the perfect lens for run and gun corporate filmmaking, whether it's real estate, whether it's interviews, whether it's collecting B-roll, so many different situations this lens is ideal for. If you're doing hybrid work, this is such a perfect lens. You know, you can be shooting a really nice interview with it, then quickly switching across and doing some headshots without needing to worry about bringing multiple lenses. This is what I've been doing a lot with this lens in the past year. In fact, we've done so much corporate work. The vast majority of our corporate work has been shot just on this one lens. There may be occasions where a prime lens or a 7200 could become useful, but I would say the vast majority of the work that you do in the corporate world could definitely be covered by this lens. So why the Sigma 24 to 70 and not any of the competition? Well, let's first talk about the Sony lens, the Sony G Master, the ultimate choice when it comes to a 24 to 70 on the Sony system. And without doubt, it is an amazing lens. It's probably the best option out there. It's gonna give you better results. It's gonna give you better autofocus. But the question I'd say is by how much? How much better is it actually going to be? And to be honest, there really isn't that much difference between I think the Sigma and the Sony when it comes to image quality and when it comes to autofocus. The two main reasons why you'd pick one or the other. But the price difference, well, it's double the price over the Sigma. And I just don't think it's worth spending that much more on the Sony over the Sigma, unless you really have everything else that you want in your kit. At the other end of the scale, of course, there is Tamron with the 28 to 75. Once again, another great lens and even better value for money than the Sigma. However, I do personally feel it's just a little bit plasticky compared to with the Sigma. I trust the Sigma was gonna last many, many years. Whereas I think with the Tamron, Run, I feel over time it's slightly more plasticky design could end up breaking. The other issue I have with the Tamron which I think is more of a deal breaker for me is the fact that it's 28 mil and not 24. Yes you do gain a bit on the telephoto end and that is nice but it's not really that much of a gain. You can always use the crop sensor on the Sony cameras but I think at the other end 24 and 28 that's actually quite a big difference. That is a noticeable difference in focal range. And if you're trying to get a wide shot of an interior, that will be noticeable. I think if you had 28 mil as your widest, you would need another lens to go along beside it so you could get the wider shots when needed. Whereas with 24, that is often enough and all you actually need. Finally, if you want a smaller lens, of course, there is the new Sigma 28 to 70 millimeter. Once again, it's a bit lacking at the wide end, but this is a much smaller lens. Maybe not quite the same build quality and not the same image quality that the 24 to 70 has, but I think if you want a walkabout lens, something that you would take on holiday, this might actually be a better option. It's certainly gonna be a lot lighter, smaller, and easier to travel with. However, I think if you're working professionally, I think you'd rather have the extra weight. It does give you that extra stability. The extra width is much nicer as well, as I've mentioned before. And I think it's worth spending that little bit more on a lens that's really going to last. It's not that much more money, and I definitely think it's worth it over the 28 to 70. You really could make a good living just by using this lens on its own. Now, it's not to say it's the only lens you'll ever need to buy. Of course, you'll need something that can shoot a bit further for certain types of shoot. Sometimes a prime lens may be better when you're really in very dark, low light situations. However, the vast majority of the time, the Sigma 24 to 70 
is the only lens that you need. Now, some of you out there may be saying, but John, I need a lens that has power zoom that can also go a bit further because I'm filming sport. Well, that's great because I've done a review of the Sony 28 to 135. So check out that video right here if you want to learn more about that lens. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you next time. Goodbye.